He said I wasn't cooperating with him when I was asking him all these questions. He said I wasn't cooperating with him. And he put me in handcuffs and he pushed me against the tree. And he started going through my bag. He asked for my information. I gave it to him. I saw that Taurus walked down the streets every day. But for them to stop me, really? Why me? Like, African-American carrying a nice camera in a neighborhood that's high racial profiling? I felt it was a moment of discrimination. Like, I didn't like it. I felt uncomfortable, and I rushed to where I got to safely. And I told, you know, my supervisor, like, yo, I'm sorry I'm late. This is what happened. And ever since then, this is where I'm at. My name is Jamisha. I am from San Francisco. My favorite color is pink. I like to dance, I like to draw, I like to write poetry. I have dreams of majoring in criminal justice. Hi, I'm Omari. I'm 15 years old. I go to June Jordan High School, School for Equity and Arts. Um, I like to do art on my free time and listen to music. I like spoken word a lot, a lot of poetry and stuff like that. My name is Shayna Lancaster and I'm born and raised in Oakland, California. I've worked with youth in the Bay Area for a number of years, but I currently serve as the program director for Spotlight on the Arts, which is a workforce development program here in San Francisco. Um, in October of 2013, we actually had a couple of our interns come to us within a week. Uh, telling us about some pretty disturbing interactions that they had with um, SFPD, with the police department. It all started at Spotlight on the Arts, who helped me get a paid internship at Intersection for the Arts, who then referred me to First Exposures, which is a photography mentoring program. And the day I applied, I got accepted. And first day, like literally first day, I got a camera. Like, that's why it's called First Exposures, my first exposure to a real camera, so it was, it was very exciting. Um, Mostly into like comic books and manga, anime, graffiti. I usually like to listen to music and write, write in this book. I have a lot of my lyrics and just different stuff that has to do with what I'm feeling or how I'm doing. I know that Muni is like, like People don't pay fair on Muni, and I do, but this time I had, I didn't have 75 cents, I only had $20, and it's not, it wasn't like small enough to be accepted by the, by the meter at the front of the bus. One day I'm walking down, you know, going to my workshop with Spotlight, and I'm walking down 6th Street, and I get stopped by two police on a bike. I'm like, okay. Um, they asked me, ma'am, do you have permission to have this camera? Of course. This is my camera. It's around my neck. I'm walking. Like, what do you want? So I sat down, and the, the, muni, the munium police, they got on, and I told him that I only had $20, and he said, well, you should have put that in. And it's like, how am I going to put $20 in to the meter thing when it only takes $1 bills and I guess five? I don't know. My name is Chris Bridges. I'm the Racial Justice Fellow at the ACLU in Northern California. Uh, I primarily work on the Education Equity Project. Um, essentially, we work on three different kind of areas, uh, litigation, legislation, um, and policy work. And he pulled me off to the side and he said, I'm going to search your bag, okay? I'm like, okay. Like, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I have nothing to hide. Like, I don't smoke, I don't do none of that. So. You can search my bag if you want to. And I tried to talk to him, like, you know, I have to go. Like, can we finish this? Like, I have to go. You're, you know, wasting my time. Essentially, there are three really important rights um, that students or youth or anybody, for that matter, should keep in mind when interacting with police and 
Uh, they come in the form of the U.S. Constitution and specifically the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, and the Fifth Amendment. So the First Amendment deals with freedom of speech, the Fourth Amendment deals with unreasonable searches and seizures, and then the Fifth Amendment deals with uh, the right to remain silent um, in case you're arrested or anything like that. And I told him that and I tried to explain to him and he said, you got to step off the bus and talk to the boss man or whatever. And I got off the bus and I seen the police officer and he approached me very aggressively and he was telling me why why I didn't have my ticket and that he needed to search me and all this other stuff. Why are you asking me questions and doing this? He was like, I suggest that you stop talking to me and go. Unfortunately, it wasn't really surprising because we have seen this pattern across uh, the country, really. Um, but, you know, it's pretty infuriating. Uh, we have really incredible young people that come to us, to our program, who are very creative, they're really inspired, um, and they're looking for some professional experience. You know, most of them are um, going to school full time, they're working at an arts internship. We even have a lot of young people who are taking care of their family, um, economically or emotionally. So we're talking about really wonderful, engaged, um, responsible young people. I was, you know, I was confused at the moment, like, what just happened? Like, did he, you know, thoughts was running through my mind. Like, is he racial profiling me? Like, I understand, like, the, like the neighborhood I was in, it was African Americans who sell weed, do this, do that. And it was, you know, on the corner of the Tenderloin. Anytime you're interacting with police uh, outside of um, being arrested or just running into police on the street, uh, you should never, ever, ever, ever consent to a search with any police officer. Um, there are a couple of buzz phrases that you can use when a police officer comes up and asks you for questions, but uh, it's important to understand what your rights are across the different kinds of interactions you might have. So if a police officer comes up to you and is just asking you uh, questions like, what's your name, where are you going, um, you might answer the, those questions and you might say uh, or ask this particularly really important phrase, uh, sorry officer, but are you detaining me or am I free to go? Um, in asking that phrase, you're asking the officer to acknowledge whether or not you're actually being stopped for a legitimate reason or if he's just kind of hassling you. Grab my, my arm in an aggressive way and bent it backwards and he started going through my backpack and I told him to call my mother and my mom was calling me at the time because she was worried about me because I was on my way back from school because I stayed late to do some work. And yeah, and then he took my phone out of my pocket and he pressed not answer and he said, we'll just talk to her later when she was calling, when he could have talked to her. Um, in that particular situation, if uh, Omari was asked to leave the bus, then I would certainly um, exit the bus without trying to, again, without, without um, getting too angry or overreacting on the part of Omari and I would try to distance myself from the police officer to the extent that you can. Um, in that particular situation, it seems like something happened in between the two. Uh, the officer proceeded to handcuff Omari. I don't know why that he, uh, Omari would have to be handcuffed for not having a transfer ticket, but in the event that Omari is being handcuffed, that goes back to um, stating, remaining silent and um, asking to see a lawyer, uh, or just remaining silent because, uh, and to supplement that, I would ask, why am I being handcuffed? Um, you would definitely have a right to know why it is that you're being put in handcuffs for not having a transfer ticket. It must have been more than 10 minutes after he was done riding, he just had me standing there looking dumb in front of everybody and they were just, people were just looking at me and that, that like took away my pride and dignity. Like, I felt really bad about that because I'm not the type to do like criminal stuff like that, so yeah. Um, outside of asking the question, what is the offense that I, I committed, I would, again, remain silent and ask to see a lawyer. Um, at the point when you're arrested, you, the police officers have a right to search your, you and your immediate surrounding belongings. So it wouldn't help him very much to be able to say, I do not consent to a search, but based off of the offense, and maybe Omari was not put in handcuffs for any reasonable or legal reason, then it might help just to say I don't consent to a search even while he's being placed in handcuffs and, and getting searched. Um, so those are the two things that I think probably most apply to his particular situation. I do not consent to a search 
And if he's then put in handcuffs and searched, I would say, I am going to remain silent. I wish to see a lawyer if the police officer starts asking him any additional questions. Uh, my name is Ramon Gomez. I am a senior at Gateway High School, and I am co-chair of the Youth Justice Committee here at the Youth Commission. I'm Denisha Webb. I'm a District 10 Youth Commissioner, and I am in the Youth Justice Committee. Well, it started, um, it's been a committee for the past three years. Every year there's, there's a set of different committees at the Youth Commission, and the Youth Justice Committee has been committee for three years. <laughs> yeah, so the Youth Justice Committee specifically deals with issues really relating to um, kind of the justice system that would affect youth in San Francisco. So um, one example of that uh, relating to the police department is um, last year we worked on an issue where SFPD wanted to equip their officers with tasers and there was a lot of backlash from the community. Um, and the Youth Commission was a part of kind of the um, push to make sure that they weren't armed with tasers because we really felt that they had, they were already perfectly equipped with a lot of um, training and various other um, things that they could use instead of having to use or resort to tasers. Now, we wanted to make it clear to SFPD that we definitely value their safety, um, but we just, it just wasn't the way to go. We felt that, we felt that there was other ways that they could go around um, making their officers safer in the city. I got involved with the Youth Justice Committee because I felt with my district where I'm from, violence and the justice system is a big issue. So I felt, and I also felt that also um, communities such as my own, communities like my own, would, were also going through the same troubles. So I felt like working in the Youth Justice Committee would um, help my own district as well as others like it. I got, a, I got involved with the Youth Justice Committee because I felt that that's the, that's the committee that I kind of most, most connected with. Um, the Youth Commission has a lot of priorities and I think they're equally as important. Uh, I felt personally I would be able to do a better job representing my peers and youth in general um, relating to the youth justice system because I've, you know, my friends have been involved with various issues relating to police and um, juvenile probation department. So I felt personally I would be able to do a good job um, to help the youth in this committee. Depending on what evidence police officers might have to link you to a potential offense, they can detain you and they can use um, handcuffs or zip ties or other things to restrain you while they execute a search to determine whether or not their reasonable suspicion or their probable cause for searching you in the first place or detaining you in the first place was merited. Um, so just because you're in handcuffs doesn't mean you're going to be arrested, but you, I would still assert those two phrases regardless. Uh, I don't consent to a search if they're searching you and they haven't told you that they're actually placing you in, under arrest. and. I wish to remain silent and I want to see a lawyer. If they say, I'm arresting you, you're being placed under arrest, that's the exact time when you say, I'm going to remain silent, I want to see a lawyer. And even prior to that, I wouldn't share much information outside of maybe my name. And sharing your name might be useful in situations where you're at least being detained. The cop hasn't said he's arresting you yet, he's just detaining you. It might be useful because they might know exactly who they're looking for and if you actually provide your legitimate name, which you should always do, um, then they can rule you out and might let you go a lot quicker. Um, so what are some ideas that you think others can do to prevent this harassment from happening again? <sighs> to be honest, anything can happen at any moment, at any time of the day. All I can say is be aware of your surroundings, watch what you carry, watch what you do and who you hang around with because even though it happened to me, it can happen to you but in a different way. It could be you being around the wrong people, like guilty by association. It can happen. Like I can't really give advice because not every you know, person like me carries a camera. 
-hmm. Some people have iPads, some people have iPhones. Like it's different things that you can get, you know, know yourself involved with. So I really can't, you know. All right, thank you. <laughs> uh,